Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for the most popular and least listened to podcast in the world, the Sixth Sense Media Podcast, with your host, Mike Phelan. it up. I saw it. You saw it. <laughs> Would you believe me if I told you I didn't know how I got here? I know you. You got some tricks up your sleeve. killing you. There we go. Okay. So, uh, go, don't go. Uh, how did you get associated with this production? Um, so, Alex Knapp got in contact with me through his girlfriend, Mm -hmm. Fiona, we um, knew each other through childhood, through our parents, through our moms. And she reached out to me asking if she could put us in touch uh, that he had a project he was working on. And I said, of course. And then we, he sent it over. We, I read it. We spoke about it. And then we made it. And now it's out. And it's, yeah. That's, I think that's the simplest casting uh, process I've ever I'd heard. I'd say it was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> It was one of the simpler ones, definitely. Uh, when you when you read the part, what was your initial reaction to it? Um, well, it wasn't even. I don't know if exactly my reaction to just my character is K, but all of it. I liked the way the whole script sounded. It was. I love films that like really sit in the moment mm -hmm. and really, you know give you the feeling of the world that's around you. And even reading that, you could see that sort of world. And then also with his memories and other visual moments, um, he, I just liked how that all worked out. And then, oh, well, I guess, yeah, one of my initial things for Kay, it was sort of fun to have this sort of, these sort of dreamlike moments to where you can for me a little bit it was like you know some acting of just like ethereal angelic fairy-like moments to me that's what i used them as so <laughs> that's where my brain went um but i was excited to do it and the crew that he had attached to it you know everyone that made the film he they all had great portfolios so yeah yeah. Since this does have a slow burn to it, how, as an actor, how do you go about doing those long sequences where it's very 
there's not really a, a point to the scene as far as dialogue is concerned. It's more focused on you and your interactions with uh, your non-vocal interactions. How do you approach that as an actor? How do you get into that space to pull that off? Um, honestly, it depends on the director. Mm -hmm. um, I've done a lot of television too. And in television, I feel like they don't really allow you to really sit in your moments mm -hmm. because you know, it's a well-oiled machine. We've got to hurry up because we got to get to the next scene so that we make our day so we can do it. You know, so Alex was able to allow us to just sit there and be in it. And as an actor, it's it's nice. It gives you a second to sort of not be like, oh, I have this to say and this and this and this and this is what I have to do. It's sort of like, okay, I'm here. This is what my character is doing. I'm going to say some stuff and then <laughs> we're going to see where it all flows. And Luckily with Alex, there was a lot of just natural understanding chemistry between us of mm -hmm. like working chemistry of knowing like what I got a good idea of what he wanted instinctually and like vice versa for him, like him and me, you know, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah. Was it kind of more of a uh, therapeutic experience as opposed to filming on a TV show? A little bit, yeah. And I got to like, go to my mother's house in upstate New York to film as well. So got to get out of New York City for a little while. So it was. It was a little, it was a therapeutic job. Uh, a what? week away in the Hudson Valley and uh, <laughs> sitting in your moments. <laughs> it was great. Uh, when you saw the completed film, what did you think of it? beautiful honestly if i were to see that film not knowing anything about it mm -hmm. i wouldn't have thought it was made with like a skeleton crew super low budget indie you know i wouldn't think that at all i mean that really cinematography wise it is like a beautifully shot film yeah i'm very happy with it what did you think uh, it's it looks amazing <laughs> Uh, I see it. I, my speciality is indie film and you very, mm -hmm. you don't often see an indie film that looks like this. Usually it's very, you could tell what camera was shot on because you can go to the store and buy the exact same camera, but. Or audio for me. It's always mm -hmm. the sound. There's like a sound of silence in the audio of indie films sometimes that it's like, you can tell that you're using a microphone. Like, yeah. it just doesn't, like, blend right. <laughs> Luckily, we don't have that problem in this film. Well, yeah, and you, and you can't always afford, like, a great sound mixer or anything. You, yeah. you know, you're limited, but you could still make good art with it, which is what I consider this. This is something I would actually consider art. It's yeah. not just film, just it's art. Because it takes, mm -hmm. you know, you can not like a film for its plot, but then if you just watch it and you experience it as a visual medium it can be enjoyable even if you're not like i don't get it <laughs> mm -hmm. that's when i tr when you try to show like like high concept films to people that aren't used to watching cinema and they just go it was really pretty but i just didn't get it yo <laughs> <laughs> like, like nothing but, stuck <laughs> but you still thought it was beautiful you still appreciated the visual aspect of it so yeah, yeah it's 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 a treat to see films like this that go above and beyond what they have to because you mm -hmm. could do the same plot and do bare bones, but is it going to be memorable? <laughs> yeah. I think um, this one hurts. I think this one has a, this one has a shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as opposed to doing uh, uh, studio films or, uh, or television or indie films, which, which of those do you prefer to do more often? Or which would you um, like to do more often? Television is is your stable job mm -hmm. that's that's like the best way to explain it television is your nice stable office job cubicle you know <laughs> everything's all cut out and right there um and i love television the shows that i've been able to work on were you know close to my heart but i love indie films like i love indie films I always have, and also growing up, you know, in smaller films, foreign films, because indie films weren't really, I feel like they weren't really around when we were younger. Mm -hmm. And those were foreign films. But anyways, those sort of films that I saw that I'd be like, 
this is a freaking, like, I can be that actor. Like, I might not be like Julia Roberts or, you know, with the straight teeth of like this other actress or, but it's like, but I can be one of these. Then indie films started coming out. And I was like, I want to be in all of these. Mm -hmm. And I still want to be in uh, all of them. <laughs> so, um, ideally, my dream would be to do a TV show for about half of the year and then on the off time shoot a couple indies uh, that would be the dream how has the current situation affected uh actors and, and productions and everything um well there's no more in-room auditions mm, i've heard which that, is, yeah, yeah it, it's a. Uh, I mean a lot of actors they like having being able to do tapes mm -hmm. at home i prefer actually being in the room um so it does suck not having that anymore but i've been doing tapes at home and i haven't done any working yet on a set during covid um but what i've heard from other friends is a lot of covid testing a lot of mask wearing and a lot of precautions but it's happening mm -hmm. so uh Let's book something and then I'll find out and tell you. <laughs> as far as uh, auditioning on tape versus actually being in the room with the casting director and the director and everybody else, do you feel that you get a better feedback instantly from, from being with them or is it a little bit more nerve wracking to be in front of people and trying to audition? Um, well, that de that's definitely always up to the actor. Mm -hmm. For me personally, I, I mean, I can go into a room kill that audition in one take, you know, not mess up and walk out and be like, great. Doesn't matter if I did good or, or if I got it or not. I still had this great audition. I had this great interaction with this casting director, you know, or whoever else. So everything is a lesson. But now with tapes, I can do the same amount of studying and it'll take me like 30 minutes to get through one take. And it's just like, why? Like, I know that you can do it in one take and this isn't, new at all but um it just takes longer and then you know what you have to send that good take and make sure that it is perfect in a way because mm -hmm. you don't want to make yourself look bad right you know so it's like you want them to because you don't have that moment to show your own personality and to get that energy feel of like this is who i am you know because who knows maybe it's like your audition wasn't bad but they're like but our energy was great you know like I want to see you again for the callback, maybe. Mm -hmm. But on the camera, they could be like, oh, no, it just doesn't really fit. And then nothing after that. You know? Is, do you think there's any way to recreate that adrenaline you need when auditioning directly in front of people to recreate that on a taped audition? Uh, I think it would help. Uh, if you figure out a way, let me know. <laughs> oh, live snakes dangling <laughs> over your head something like that I don't know yeah so. I'm like I'm like yeah if you can figure I've even tried like going to friends places to shoot because maybe it's like not in my the comfort of my own home mm -hmm. uh that hasn't helped either though no. oh <laughs> yeah and, and trust now me, with I, everything I've, it's hard to do anyway so I failed plenty myself so I mean <laughs> I just know I'm not a good act. I'm just not cut out for it so <laughs> I know my my boyfriend love him to death but he's so not an actor and you know he's like i wish that you i could read with you i'm like yeah but you're just you're really bad like i love you but mm. yeah <laughs> i also just can't act around him either it's like a mm -hmm. weird beard i don't like to act with my partners <laughs> do you really need, do you really need someone that's con uh that has the conviction in the role to read the lines with you or is it something else? it helps Mm -hmm. it can help sometimes it's fine you know i've had bad readers and it, it makes you look better yeah. um, <laughs> it's like god that person speaking on the other end is so bad but but she's pretty good um but yeah i think also like i was saying for, part of it is like i can't act around him mm -hmm. so i think you know him being bad and me not being able to act around him our tapes are just not good <laughs> at all sadly uh what's been one of your uh favorite roles or favorite uh, experiences on set um i loved doing channel zero butcher's block mm -hmm. that whole experience was really great for me 
um, it was my first like series regular leave of my own, sh you know, my the season, my show of the season. Um, and working with Wetker Howard was great, and I learned so much. And that was that was actually a time where that director, Kasha Stevens, she let me, you know, sit in my moments and. Mm -hmm. I got to learn that and how that is. It was, it was, it was the job where I really got to put a lot of my theories of acting that I accumulated in my head and put them to practice. And I'm glad to say that I did most, I put most of them to practice and, and I got to sort of see how I am as an actor, you know? So I learned a lot from that one. Okay. Uh, my last question, uh, mm -hmm. since, you're a very young actor, so you're very, you've, you've gone through the, the process a lot. It's a lot fresher in your head than it is in mine. For, for people that are trying to get into the business, what would you say to those people that are just trying to break in? Um, don't give up. It is very hard. It is very hard, but don't give up. Um, don't let people get under your skin because it is whole industry of uh judgment don't fucking care about them basically uh be true to yourself and make your own shit that's that was that enough. was advice given to me by ryan gosling on the street of new york and i asked him who his first agent was and he said because that's what i used to ask famous people when i didn't have one mm -hmm. he's like who was your first agent how did you get into acting but he was like, you don't want my first agent. She was like bad. She only did a magicians. And I was like, well, you don't know if I can do magic. <laughs> and he was like, okay. <laughs> and he was like, you don't need an agent. He's like, there's so many ways now with YouTube and everything. I think it was only YouTube then. And, but he was like, there's so many ways to just make your own shit, mm -hmm. write your own script, shoot your own thing. I mean, with iPhones and everything, Speaking of like cinematography values of, I mean, Tangerine was done on an iPhone mm -hmm. and that is really done beautifully. There's an aesthetic to it, but it's a beautiful aesthetic, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, yeah, don't give up. Don't care about people's judgment and make your own shit. You've been listening to the Sixth Sense Media Podcast. You can find more of our celebrity interviews and roundtable discussions on iTunes, Podbean, and SoundCloud. Be sure to check out our movie, TV, and video game coverage at SixthSense.com and FanBolt.com.